Welcome to the 23rd and final episode of Season 3 of the Ubuntu UK Podcast. It's Monday the 20th of December 2010, and in this episode we're going to review our predictions from last year and come up with some uh, new ones for 2011. We're also going to present the Ubuntu UK Podcast players in a special version of Jack and the Beanstalk. We will of course cover the latest news, events, a bit about Ubuntu, command line love, and go over your feedback. I'm Simon, uh, with me this week are Laura, Mark... Alan and uh, Tony. Evening all. Evening. Hello. Hello. Right, Laura, what have you been up to this week? In I've, fact, since the last show. Since the last show, I've been playing with Diaspora, the distributed version of Facebook. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. Well, it's not actually distributed yet. It's just a <laughs> alpha at the moment. Okay. Um, and it's a very sort of limited features, but it's quite cool. It's um, You log in, uh, when you add friends or colleagues or whatever, you drag and drop them into a pain that says it's like an as they call it aspects i think they need to work on that terminology a bit mm. um so that you're always kind of working in the groups that they're grouped into so you can then put out statuses to that group or to everyone mm-hmm. sounds good sounds um, interesting but yeah. I, think, I think facebook call those groups <laughs> <laughs> yeah ah, yeah intuitive yeah so but yeah i think the idea is that you'll be able to install it on your own server and then you link together so you always own your own Ah. Take the bit that I didn't get before about status.net, which is quite cool. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. That's good. Mark, what have you been up to? Uh, I've been doing some desktop programming with Qt Quick, which is a it's a new feature in the latest release of Qt, which hmm. lets you basically use JavaScript to build desktop applications. Ooh. You lost me at desktop. <laughs> you lost me at JavaScript. <laughs> <laughs> which is good for a web developer who okay. wants to branch out. Because uh, I've, I've got a project I'm working on which I want to create as a desktop application as well as a web application. And I've been trying to find a good way of doing it which isn't too much of a learning curve. And uh, I've wanted to use Qt as well because it's cross-platform. Cool. Is this super bleeding edge new? or uh, it... No, I mean, it's in the latest stable um, Qt 4.7. I think it's 4.7. Um, Is that like the KD equivalent of Quickly? Not really right. because it's not... It, it's not sort of a, um it doesn't build a framework for an application for you to package and publish and things like that easily it just it's a, an easy way of writing just q tabs whereas normally you'd have your language like ruby or c++ with the Qt library installed hmm. um you have um a language called qml which be where basically you just declare Qt widgets um and then you have some javascript to do all the logic behind it yeah. Oh, thanks, thanks. That's yeah. enlightening. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that. <laughs> Alan, what have you been up to? Loads. And um, I've got to reading from your list. One. Uh, cha- I'll tell you what, changing my passwords on everything. Because, you know, Gorka and Lifehacker and all that got um, hacked and they yeah, published yeah. everyone's passwords. Yep. Well, my user was one of the ones that got um, put out there. Oh, really? I, I've signed up to their. Um, service at some point and like an idiot i use the same password on a fair number of places it was, it's, i mean it's a good password it's not like one two three four five six or anything stupid it's like one that. two three four five six seven <laughs> shut up um but the fact is i used it in a lot of places and i counted i think it's 120 places wow wow different sites so i saw that the same some... password I saw yeah that. i know it's stupid but how did you remember all the ones where you'd well one good tip is search your inbox search your email inbox for your own password and you'll find loads of websites that have emailed you your own password. Oh, that's good. one, that's yeah, one yeah. good pro tip. That's a, a nice bit of uh, application development. But there. actually, I, I, I kind of, I, I do have a like list of sites I go to, and I, I kind of kept a record of them anyway. But every so often, I'll come up with one. And go, oh, good, yeah, I'll need to change that one as well. Stop uh, that. And so then that when, was fun. when you're at that halfway point where you've changed some but not others. Well, I've, actually, they're all now completely different. And they're all, I used PWGen, the password generator program. <laughs> To yeah. generate them all, so they're all different. They're all alphanumeric, and so know. have you backed up your password list now? I have, yeah. For you lose it, I printed it out. <laughs> <laughs> Do you post it to your monitor? <laughs> nice it's in my bag, just there. <laughs> Don't lose your bag, mm. uh, Tony. Could be good. Hello there. Um, apart from having a Christmas cold. So hopefully I don't sound too bad. Yeah. A um, couple of things. I did a, an ITIL V3 Foundation course. A couple of. Uh, UUPC listeners have tweeted me saying, oh, if they passed it, anybody can. Um, so <laughs> I will find oh, out nice. in the new year whether I've passed the exam or not. What's um, ITIL? ITIL is IT Infrastructure Library. Are you asleep yet? Um, <laughs> it's a set of guidelines about running IT services. 
for companies, essentially. Gosh. So some yeah. nonsense. So Simon, what did you do this week? <laughs> 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 but much more excitingly, much more, exciting. much more excitingly, I uh, found out yesterday that I had a, a character in a Doctor Who play, a Doctor Who audio play, named after me. <laughs> and it turned out Laura did as well. Oh, wow. Yeah, so there's a character in the latest one called The Four Doctors, called Toby Whitmore, <laughs> which is named after me. And there's a character called Lady Cowan, who's, who's named after Laura. I kid you not. That's smart. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Good. Anyway, what about you, Simon? Any geek uh, one? Uh, I've been geeking out with a bit of uh, MQTT, which is the... Um, oh, Laura, describe it quickly. You've worked on it. Messaging protocol for small things. Small things. <laughs> <laughs> is that the official name? Yeah. yeah. So we've all got these energy monitors. And uh, as you know, as Popey knows, we've both got ours um, making graphs and putting them out on the web so everybody can have a look at them. Now, I've been playing with um, that and trying to get it done via MQTT rather than just simply creating graphs, which means I've got to fight with Perl, which I've been doing, <laughs> hacking up other people's scripts and them not working and <laughs> screaming and... <laughs> Uh, so that's really it. I just remembered I said I'd lend you Pearl 5 for dummies, yeah, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me to get Pearl 5 for complete. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People that don't code and don't do languages. Cool. And, uh, and that's about it. That's about it, yeah. Let's get on with it. Hey, last time. Go on then. Sounds like a fun pack show. Yay! Uh-oh. Okay, we, uh, last year, uh, this time last year, we, we came up with some predictions of uh, what we thought would happen in 2010. And um, we've dug them out. I'm uh, looking forward to this because I wasn't here to make any, so I was here to <laughs> laugh at yours. Yeah, you can laugh at them. So, um, yeah, Mark, why don't you run through them? <laughs> <All right, laughs> you didn't have any. <laughs> uh, okay, Laura's was. Uh, wishlist idea. Uh, good for Ubuntu if Canonical sponsored a project to fix sound, drag it into shape, get it working. Ooh. Oh. Well... Sound seems to be in a lot better nick now than it was last year. Yeah, mm-hmm. I found it yeah, I sort of seems issues. to be easier. If there's a problem, it seems to be easier to get it working without having to, you know, resort to the command line. There seems to be a button to press whenever I have a problem now. Plus what? audio seems to get out of the way. If I'm using Jack or something else, it seems to sort of not cause any problems. I haven't got to use a command line to kill it. My webcam mostly works, but um, I think you still have to go into the sound preferences and tell it to switch. Choose it. And if Chrome, I think, or Chrome, it might have been Chromium, was running, it would hog it and it would all flash. <laughs> the, nice. dialogue, the preferences dialogue would just flash. Nice. I, th- I think I agree. I, I think sound is much better. Like I've, it's better I've than had, it was. I've had Skype and Flash stuff running and music playing and random mm. third-party applications like <laughs> Spotify playing music and... Yeah. I honestly for the last year I probably haven't even thought about sound problems. You'd have to reboot between sound applications. <laughs> no, you don't, have, you don't have to kill pulse audio or uh, Yeah. And yeah, I've been doing some screencasting and just plugging a microphone in and yeah, choosing the microphone yeah. and it works. So, so I don't know whether Canonical can take the credit for that, but certainly it's I think got Laura a lot should. Uh, yeah. I should. Yeah. <laughs> okay, one tick for Laura then. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, Simon had two. Uh it was first prediction was more linux phones on the market well done win yeah. <laughs> that's a definite yes well yeah technically if uh, you consider android to be uh, linux <laughs> <laughs> it's got a linux kernel yeah uh and a wishlist prediction uh more advocacy more of general public to see linux not just geeks and nerds through their phones yeah, yeah. i guess as a byproduct you, yeah, you, yeah. you win that well, you, one. Know. You, do, you do get you do get phones marketed because they're running android and That's I've, true. Yeah. I've come across people who know nothing as far as I know about Linux and say they prefer an Android phone over an iPhone. Yeah, but they don't know They're it's just Linux. Linux. <laughs> no, but... <laughs> That's probably a good... Maybe that's where we're going to go. Let's not get into the uh, next year's predictions. Well, they, they but... do... <laughs> I suppose they do know it's Linux. They know it's Android. They don't well, yeah, Android, they don't is, know. Android is a Linux-based system. But they don't know what it is. Yeah, they don't necessarily know it's this guy Linux from is. this guy oh, from Finland started it. Yeah, but it's good enough that it's seen as an alternative to iPhone, even if you don't care about the free and everything. Yeah, even if we don't. Even, yeah, I think that's the key thing, isn't it? The, even if we don't push the rationale and the history and you know the philosophy behind <laughs> it, the fact that you're using it. But then that was always the way, you know, when you'd say to people, oh, do you use Linux? No. Do you use Google? Well, then you use Linux. You know, that <laughs> is smarmy, you know. Yeah. It, that, that's the same thing. We're doing effectively the same thing with Android yeah. phones. Oh, you don't use Linux, don't you? Well, what about that Android phone? That's Linux. Didn't you know? Yeah, but the bit you, you don't do is tell them. <laughs> well, yeah. True. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Popey's first prediction was... 
More Linux netbooks, x86 and ARM. Yeah. Ah. Ah. Perhaps uh, not. Yeah, I think we failed that one. <laughs> what is this we? You don't go dragging us into yeah. <laughs> inaccurate <laughs> bit of solidarity there. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I would notice that, uh, Mark, you're reading that from uh, a netbook. Which I bought this year, but it's a reconditioned one because they don't make this running Linux anymore. Oh, you you oh. can't go and buy... We were in, I was in Maplin's the other mm. weekend and looking around at the netbooks and mm. none of them are running Linux anymore. No. Yeah. All running Windows. Yeah, I had, I had okay. to look on a reconditioned laptop website just because I wanted a netbook running Linux. Well, the, no, uh, I wanted this netbook running Linux. <laughs> and the ARM, the ARM prediction hasn't come through no, yet. No, no, um, I haven't seen any. Although, Linux, although no, Chrome, a Chrome OS is built in x86 and ARM variants. So is Ubuntu, isn't it? Yeah, but you think, you know, someone like um, Google who are looking to make netbooks with Chrome OS mm. mass market and they're, you know, what, uh, what maybe about, next year. What about tablets, though? Because they're the progression from netbooks, aren't they, really? Yeah, uh, I didn't predict that, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I was, I was trying to throw you a bone there, but yeah. you throw it back at me. <laughs> no worry. Okay, fair enough. Um, your Popey's next prediction was more than 10% of the market. Uh, which market was that? I, I think, uh, yes. Server market? Yes. <laughs> Android phone market? Yeah, I think, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. the whole market. The yeah, whole, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I failed that one as well. <laughs> uh, and finally, taking, oh, yes. taking cues from Gnome 3, Ayatana won't get something like that in the short term due uh, to its... And uh, there's no LTS. That oh, LTS, sorry. Due to that, being LTS. Uh, yes. Sorry, someone didn't type ah, that. I know what that was. Yeah, I, I said that um, the the Ubuntu desktop would would be taking cues from the new, GNOME three, which was looking very new right, and very different. Yes. And I said that it wouldn't be happening in the short term. What's happening? Unity next year. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. that was a plan anyway. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't. Yeah. And it's supposed Let's to be this year. That one. This year well, just gone. Yeah. Not, not that rollover that prediction. In fact, exactly. Yeah. Predict it again. This, this you're just ahead of your time. Yeah. yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. Not with this haircut. <laughs> <laughs> um and finally tony uh with yes. just one prediction that a new short format podcast in uh in line with shot of jack would be out soon yeah and that is rant of fab of course <laughs> so I, I was... is that just where you you take a, a linux outlaws episode and chop it up uh, that, yeah i think so um so i was obviously spot on with that rant, rant of fab that was the one i meant <laughs> you complete liar. <laughs> <laughs> it's working on my inside, mm. not itch. Right. So you thought there was going to be some other short form. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, but it didn't happen. Oh, well. It hasn't happened yet. So um, that was our prediction for this year. What about uh, next year? We've had well, some... We have some, uh, some... Oh, these were the predictions. You submitted from our... predictions for, oh, yeah. for this year. Well. For the last year. Yes. Yes. So uh, Elliot J.H., said uh, less on netbooks more on general devices that run linux but don't show it like smartphones and simplified netbooks yeah he's got that um yeah. pvr you could get a humax pvr that runs mm. linux but doesn't show it so and there's loads of them about true i guess your washing machine could run it and we would never know <laughs> yeah toaster and lots of yeah. smartphones yeah. yeah yeah well done elliot jh uh liam gh uh would be great to see more machines with ubuntu pre-installed yeah, it would, wouldn't it? Yeah, <laughs> One day, yeah it would maybe. still be. Yeah, that'd be nice. Maybe that could well, come next year. Yeah. We, we've seen fewer from people like Dell, but we have seen more from people like System76, who now ship to oh, the yes. UK with yep, Ubuntu. Yeah, true. So, uh, William said, more games, open source or not, will run on Linux. We've I think just that's got a second, pretty second fair. Second Humble Indie Bundle. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah, well done. Techno Viking said, <laughs> who can guess this one? Year of the Linux desktop. Uh, hey, well done, Mike. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Looking and forward to the, your next prediction, Mike. Yeah. Uh, finally, Pyrace, Pyrace uh, said, uh, hope clever folks can sort out flash and sound issues. <sighs> there's too many of the flash ones. I think sound yeah. ones we've, we've already talked yeah, about. Yeah, sound ones we've talked about. And there's the new beta flash thing, which has 64-bit support. I and say there's that 10.2 does full screen video much and much more really? smoothly yeah really nice yeah even though i hate flash it's much <laughs> yeah. nicer cool much nicer than the horrid flash that was before it even though you hate it and you don't have it installed no in the hate it i have it and you know yeah. i yeah. still hate it <laughs> use it until you don't have to that's, that's the, the one yeah. go on isn't it right so yeah what about uh, next year what do you reckon is going to happen next year um alan go on you first mate um, there's been a lot of uh, these uh, cloud distros 
Um, not not for running your platform in the cloud, or like your desktop in the cloud, but having yeah. netbooks with an operating system where it's very lean and you store everything in the cloud. Can you actually cloud. fail before the year starts? Because I think you failed already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, the, uh, yeah, my point is that there's going to be loads of them and they're all going to fail. There's Chrome OS, Jolly Cloud, Peppermint, um, and others. And I don't think any of them are going to go anywhere. No? No. Do you not think it might replace Mumbuntu, something like Jolly Cloud? Uh, well, it's tricky because mum, my mum does just use a browser. You know, the, yeah. she phones me up and the, the questions I get are, you know, stuff like, how do I find this on the BBC website? Or how, how do I attach a photo to this email or something? Sure. They're nothing to do with the desktop. She never asked me questions about the panel icons or applications menu or anything like that. It's all about stuff that's in the cloud. But does that mean she doesn't use it or it just works, I wonder? I don't think she needs it. Right. She needs half the stuff that I've installed for her. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. So, you know, yeah, you might think she'd be the ideal candidate. Yeah, sure. And I think that's where these cloud vendors are trying to sell their their wares to you know average users but i just think they're all going to fail completely that's my prediction fair enough yeah. I agree. and why do you think they'll fail uh f- because people think they want more than just a browser and i i, I honestly think they're right uh, that the, the vendors are right that people don't generally need more than a browser but i think the users will mistakenly think they have to have full fat applications and Microsoft will probably tell them that they need full fat applications, so therefore it will fail. But Microsoft has been trying to tell us for years that we need thin. They've got the live office, online yeah. office version now. Yeah, but you still need an 8 gig Windows 7 install. For that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you also need an internet connection. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's the yeah. big pain. You know, well, you can't go and sit in um, you know, Costa and um, you know, sit on your notebook and um, surf. Well, with free Wi Fi, you know, being ubiquitous everywhere. Not, <laughs> yeah. not. Yeah. Well, that's a nice little segue into mine, um, where I, cloud OSs will start to provide offline modes where you can start working like the software is actually running there. Well, so that you can work in those situations. Google mm. used to have a um, a project called Google Gears, mm. which did mm. that, yeah. but I think they discontinued. It, it. stopped it, yeah. didn't it? Yeah. Recently, I used to use that loads actually on the train on the way to work. I would have my three G thing connected, and because I'd wave in and out of yeah. connectivity. I could still edit a document and I'd be like connecting, oh, synchronize, and then I'd go offline and carry on editing. Do you know that's the key thing that if you do want to store your data in the cloud, it's more of a synchronize rather than a yeah, live. Cache, cache it locally. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay, fair enough. Mark, what's yours? First of all, I'd like to make a, a, a slightly dubious prediction, if I may, that uh, <laughs> okay. Og Camp 11 will happen. Wow, uh, you're perhaps bold. That's, perhaps that's Og Camp 3 if you're counting in binary. <laughs> Uh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, nobody's but actually committing it. <laughs> to to yeah. so, silence. Yeah, okay. No thoughts about it till the new year. Yeah. Well, my uh, my main prediction is uh, that a mainstream commercial application, which is sort of popular on Windows and Mac, will become available through the Ubuntu Software Center. More like Photoshop, something like that. So something in that ilk. Mm. Nice one. Fair what happy. would what would uh, what what kind of apps are we talking here? Like not like yeah, you know, the current ones are like. Parallels desktop or something. Or DB2. I'm thinking of the kind of thing people say. Oh, I won't use to Linux. But I won't move to Linux because I use this commercial app. Photoshop. Photoshop. Yeah. Photoshop. Yeah. That sort of thing. Or a game. Yeah. It's got to be games or, or Photoshop. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, I'd, yeah. I'd say. I'd say a big game or right. Photoshop. Something. You know. Um, Call of Duty. Call of Duty. Something like. Is Call of Duty on PC? I don't I have know. No idea. Something. Uh, something that everyone knows the name. <laughs> yeah, of. Yeah. 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 That gets advertised on telly. Yeah. And when they say Xbox, PS3, Wii, yeah. and Ubuntu get, Software and Center, I, I don't mean. I don't mean. I don't mean installs <coughs> through Ubuntu Software Center, but actually installs Wine in the background and runs on top of that. I no, mean, actually, just... a you know a Linux native native version which mm. is available through there that like you that. can buy. I like that. Yeah, mm. could happen. Mm. Sounds reasonable, Simon. Um, yeah, increased um, security awareness. Uh, mm-hmm. Not many people. I was just checking the news before I came out tonight. And there was lots of people uh, moaning about their antivirus software, basically clogging up their system and grinding them to halt. Anti what? Um, sorry, yeah, exactly. <laughs> antivirus software. So they're turning it off and uninstalling wow. because it's you know killing their systems. So yeah. you know, with WikiLeaks um, and the fighting against um, everybody else by anonymous people might become more aware of security implications mm. uh, of what they do with their data and how they operate their things and uh, that could in theory not, lead to 
more installations of Ubuntu, which in theory at the moment is more secure. Could also lead to success from Alan. About <laughs> the cloud thing failing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, interesting. Tony. I have got a fantastic prediction, um, which is that the patent wars will get nastier, not nicer in 2011, um, and that a Linux vendor will have to either pay up or remove some bits of software um, in, the, in their distro due to patents. Or... What, 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 what kind of thing do you think will be patented? Yeah, not, not something stupid like right-clicking or something daft like that, but you know, what, what core thing do you think would really kick us in the what's it's i can see somebody finding something either in in like a file system um or a uh, a, a driver for a piece of hardware or something like that um that's somebody... keyboard driver <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the ps2 mouse driver um yeah something something fairly sort of central but um also ubiquitous that, right that's like somebody... fat file system something like that yeah although obviously most people don't run a Linux on, on fat these days no, but, but they want fat support with, for usb sticks and stuff yeah, exactly. Yeah, don't, I mean that would be a good example, certainly. Don't we just work around these issues? Don't we? Isn't it? Isn't free software like the internet in that it roots round? You know, when a problem occurs, when someone attacks, yeah. you you yeah. you know redevelop and you recode and you get rid of the thing that's broken. And but I think r- rather than just for going for the kernel developer or the kernel project, you know, somebody will go after a distro, mm. and they will have a, a a case on their hands to answer, and mm. will take lots of money, and therefore take money away from developing better software. Well, yeah. the good news is that that prediction. Almost certainly, uh, the case will last for about 10 years. And, uh, <laughs> so it won't so your prediction will last for a very long time. Yeah, exactly. I'll just keep recycling it for yes. the next decade. As long as it starts next year, that's fine. Right. I mean, obviously not fine it's in a good way. It's a bad thing. <laughs> it means I will get my prediction Tony right. advocates <sighs> submarine patents. Absolutely. So that's a nice depressing one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but we've got quite a few on Twitter, Identica and IRC. Um, more people than you might think unpredictably suggested that 2011 will be the year of the Linux desktop. Oh, uh, will it? We're going to have to change that to the year of the Linux laptop. Nobody <laughs> buys desktops anymore, do they? That's a fair this point. That's true. Oh. So what else? What else do we get? <laughs> um, Sandish on Identica uh, said that it's going to be the year of Chrome OS. Really? No, As whatever. a counterpoint to you, no, Popey? No, not at all. <laughs> no? Okay, then. MJJZF on Identica says, uh, the first two releases of Unity and Wayland will bomb. Uh, Wayland <laughs> becomes the standard in several distros, and Fedora takes credit for getting it right. He said that, not me. He said that. <laughs> Wayland's not going to be standard in several distros, because even they say it's not ready yet. Oh, uh, well. It's not ready yet. We'll find out next year. Dan7 on Twitter said um, that he predicts two Ubuntu releases, one around <laughs> Easter time, and the other one sort of sometime near Halloween. Insightful. Wow. <laughs> How does he do it, eh? He's pushing it. Yeah. Uh, Robert Leverington uh, on IC said, Ubuntu changes its default browser to something that isn't Firefox. Mm, could happen. Yeah. Chrome. Or Chromium. <laughs> uh, something really obscure. Internet Explorer. <laughs> <laughs> E-Links. Conqueror. Oh, <laughs> Links. <laughs> <laughs> Paul 2 on IRC reckons Ubuntu will lose market share to Google OS Chrome slash Chrome, Chrome slash Netbooks mm, could happen plausible Murky Goth on IRC says Canonical will release its own browser Ubuntu 2.0 optimised for Web 2.0 okay I'm entirely sure how serious that is <laughs> Simon Redmond on Twitter says his prediction there'll be a UUPC live video feed for recording sessions by the end of 2011 Okay. Moving on. <laughs> Good luck. Only if you're prepared to, uh, you know, pay for the uh, ISDN line into my house. <laughs> oh, your house, is it? Well, <laughs> essentially. Um, okay, do you want to carry on with the next one? Uh, Asmodee says uh, Android will be virtualized on dual-core mobile phones. Uh, Black Crow on Identica said uh, LibreOffice will overtake OpenOffice as the de facto standard Linux Office package. That's probably I think that's reasonable like to happen, yeah. expect that could uh, that could happen. I don't think that's uh, beyond the realms of possibility. Uh, Dave Morley on Twitter said Linux will be seen on more devices. Unity will rock. Gnome Shell will be a learning curve and break like KD 4.0 did. <laughs> I, I says, Dave, stress the point O on that. Dave, Dave Morley says Unity will rock, and uh, he works for Canonical, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I really do hope it does, but uh, we shall well, see. We shall Dave see. Morley in being massively wrong, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Basinger says, real prediction, 
a new gnome shell based community driven derivative of ubuntu will be released in reaction to unity Ooh. Mm, interesting well, that's, yeah it's possible that's, you know yeah, so gnome themselves have talked about you know gnome being the distro and maybe them creating a gnome based uh, distribution separate right. from uh, the upst- uh, downstreams he also says Canonical and Company X will release an Ubuntu tablet in the third quarter of 2011. Wow. Mm, general release in Europe, a doubtful in other areas. That would be nice. That would probably tempt me. Yeah, but all tablets are rubbish except for the iPad, aren't they? Do you know what? They? I've never even... Oh, oh. Have you got one now? <laughs> yes, oh. I have. <laughs> I've never even held one. <laughs> we'll fix that tonight. Uh, <laughs> right, is there anything left? Uh, yeah, finally, there's two more at the bottom for you, Tony. Okay, Leandro Gomez on Twitter says that UUPC will rock even harder in 2011. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh there we go. Will. He wishes us all the best. And Dorbers, Matt Daubney, says that uh, our Camp 11 will be a roaring success. Guaranteed. Well, yes, if it happens. <laughs> <laughs> you mean <laughs> that, when? That will be true. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, let us know your predictions and uh, we'll keep them on file and we'll resurrect them and uh, laugh at you this time next year. <laughs> And now it's time for some news. After recent outages, log.org.uk has published alternative methods of communication, such as Twitter accounts, for communicating details of service interruptions. Okay, has there been problems then? Yeah, well, well one of the problems was there was the the host that log.org.uk, which is a load of Linux user groups in the UK, are hosted on one box, and their mailing lists are hosted on that. Yeah, yeah when I said that out loud, it kind of <laughs> 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 yeah. it sounded a lot worse than it really is. Um, and uh, we upgraded uh, one of the virtual machines, and it all went pear shaped. Oh dear! So, um, so they've added some um, some extra ways that you can find out what the status is. Because the problem is, all the mailing lists are on that box, <laughs> yeah. so you can't put an email on that and say, "Yeah, we by can't the way, tell everyone yeah. that there's a problem." Yeah. Okay, fair enough. We'll put a link in the show notes. Richard Stallman has condemned Google's Chrome OS as encouraging careless computing. The founder of the GNU project previously warned that losing control and legal rights over your data by storing it in Google's cloud rather than on local systems is worse than stupidity. Oops. Um, (laughs) Yes, okay. So he doesn't think it'll be the year of... Uh, the cloud OS here either. <laughs> oh my, is I'm on a, the same side as Richard Storm before. <laughs> this is a new buzz phrase then, is it careless computing? Yeah, it looks um, like yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. And worse than stupidity. <laughs> I, I do, I do is, like that phrase. Yes. What is worse than stupidity? I don't know. Google Chrome? I don't know. So it's been quite prolific in The Guardian lately. I'm talking about um, rights on the internet and bringing it back to the cloud OS thing. I was talking about how um, we're just... Who, oh well it was to do with the WikiLeaks and losing their Amazon support oh yes so you're reliant on other yeah. service yeah. providers so like in real life you can give somebody some cash in person but on the internet you're dependent on someone like PayPal or Visa or MasterCard mm. allowing you to make that payment mm. so you're drawing that analogy so we should all go back to using you know gold trinkets and nuggets <laughs> rather than cash oh, we should looms the coins oh, we should be just aware and this goes back to my prediction he's making people aware Mm. Yeah, that's a good thing as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Right, South Hackton, the fledgling Southampton based hack space, is seeing new members and uh, fundamentally a space. The founders have set up a Google group for interested parties to join, have they? Is this related to the London and Manchester hack spaces we've mentioned before? Uh, I presume it's the same idea. Cool. Um, and I guess we're mentioning Southampton because you live near there. Yeah, well, it's another UK one. Excellent. Yeah. So. Or just for our UK listeners. Hopefully they've documented how they're sort of getting off the ground because there's a lot to do and there's lots to think about. I know that the London one um, is uh, going great guns. Mm. Uh, mm. It'd be nice to see something similar happening here as well. Yeah, yeah. all over the country, really. Yeah. Yeah. Theodore Rad, a developer of the OpenBSD IPsec security stack, has published an email received from a former technical consultant to the FBI claiming that the Bureau implemented several backdoors in the project's cryptographic framework with the goal of monitoring VPN traffic. This is quite big news, isn't it? It's quite scary, really. It is quite scary. But this is what you should expect, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Anything you put on the internet is gone and everybody can see it. Mm. Well, sure. You should. But there's still control over what gets back in. I mean, they're obviously talking about patches coming in. 
uh, that they've accepted into the project that, that give these backdoors. And they were in there, and the maintainers of the project didn't know because they were under the people who contributed those patches were under NDA. And it's only after ten years later that we discover that that actually was the case. Allegedly, that was the case. That's. Um, hmm. Uh, do we check every single patch for every single piece of software, or that's, just the important stuff? That's the thing, you know. Well, I mean, typically, the important could be, stuff. And, and it can be really esoteric, you know, oh, weird yeah. ways in which they can manipulate the yep. the software, you know, based on really, you know, stuff that would be almost impossible to pick up in a in a general software audit. Yeah, yeah. and we've seen it. We have seen it with OpenSSH and things in the in the past, where there's been a patch that's potentially nasty as nobody's realised for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Finally, some good news. The second humble indie bundle containing five independent cross-platform games has been released under a pay-at-what-you-want pricing structure. The payment system lets you choose how much your payment is divided between the game developers, the EFF, the Child's Play charity, and the humble indie bundle, Inc., um, which is really rather cool. Yeah. Yes. I don't know much about games, but I hear they're good. <laughs> well, the, the really, the, there's, there's a couple of nice things. Obviously, there's a bunch of games there now for Linux that you know, some of them you could probably get elsewhere i guess um but it's really nice that you know there are games that we can you know actually play yes and uh the amount that people pay is published on their website and Uh, right now linux users pay more than windows and mac users uh, they pay on average double more than double what a windows user pays so we're generous souls then or we all have loads of money left over because we don't pay for (laughs) our software yeah (laughs) But then do all Windows users pay for their software? Well, yeah. yeah. (laughs) A little little bit of politics. And in related news, um, Minecraft, which is also available on uh, on Linux, is uh, has just gone beta today. Ah, okay. Now you were telling us about this the other week. I can't remember if it was on air or not, but you were showing us a video of somebody getting very excited. It's good fun. It's a good fun game. My kids, my kids, absolutely love Minecraft. It's great. I think it does give them nightmares. Was it that the zombie one? (laughs) Yeah, exploding zombies and stuff Mm. like that. It's good. Very creative. Fun. Uh, really good fun. Okay, and that's the end of the news. We've now got a command line love, or command line love. Does it sound better say. or worse when you've got a cold? I don't know. <laughs> it should sound better. There's, there's more phlegm involved. Um, <laughs> Lovely listeners. Now, the reason I'm down for this one is this is because one I came up with. Ooh. It's quite a long one in that it's four lines long and often are, often are. <laughs> That's line a lo- command line shell script, isn't it? <laughs> well, yes, I guess. <laughs> you mean shell script love? Yeah. Shell, yeah, okay. Um, but it's only four lines long and it's a useful thing that I knocked up when I was waiting for a couple of big files to synchronise over Ubuntu One file service. It doesn't tell you that they're synchronising? Uh, it just tells you synchronising. Ah, okay. It doesn't tell you how far it's got. And if you're waiting for, say, a 300 meg file to land, you've got a bit of time to kill. Um, so this little shell script... Uh, tells you the percentage that the current file has transferred, and that's it. So you could run it using watch, which we've talked about before. Oh, so you just run it once. It's one, one hit, yeah. and it will tell you what's percentage. currently transferring. It just tells you a percentage. But are you, are you just percent- a percentage. Yes. <laughs> In fact, just a number, which you can then interpret as percentage. With a couple of minor tweaks, it could easily tell you an actual percentage figure after the number. So if I've, if I've dropped a directory full of files yes. in your Ubuntu One folder... Yes there'll be a percentage of the current file that it's transferring. Yes. Right, okay. exactly. Cool. So, yeah, if you want to just if you're bored and you want to wait work out how long you're going to take to uh, get the file then run that in Excellent. watch. Ooh. I was bored. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I called it when I saved it onto my desktop. I called it pointless script. <laughs> oh, well, you know, it's fun. And that's the command line love. Once upon a time, there was a boy called Jack. Jack was a good boy, but lazy and work shy. He lived in a tiny house on a tiny farm with his mother, but the land was poor and all the crops they planted died. They lived alone and in poverty, as Jack's father had died years ago and left them penniless. Their only possession worth anything was their cow, Daisy. Oh, Jack, I just don't know what we're going to do. We haven't got any money to pay the rent and I know the Baron's going to call round for it again tomorrow. He's going to want paying soon. I can't keep pretending I'm waiting for a payout on my Novell shares to arrive. Oh Mum, I do hate to see you so upset. Is there nothing we can do? You're a good lad, Jack, but we're running out of options quicker than I can is IPv4 addresses. I don't think there's anything else we can do but sell Daisy. No, not Daisy. 
She's my best friend. I'm sorry, my boy, but it's our only chance. Otherwise, we'll be thrown out of our home faster than a mono application in Gadoo sense. Well, if there's really nothing else we can do. And so Jack set off down the narrow, muddy track to the town, gently leading Daisy behind him. But Daisy didn't want to be sold and walked slowly and stopped unexpectedly, rather like Flash. And Jack didn't pull Daisy along or shout at her because he really didn't want to sell her either. They made such slow progress that by the time they reached the town, the market had finished. There was nobody to buy Daisy and Jack couldn't raise the money for the rent. He set off back home with Daisy following behind. Come on, old girl. I know it's a long way. Mm. We've got to keep going. I will never make it back in time before the Linux Outlaws starts. Mm. Oh, come on. All right, you win. You can have a rest. Oh, Daisy, what are we going to do? We're in more trouble than that guy at Amazon who decided it was okay to take down their WikiLeaks site. My, that's a lovely cow you have there. Moo. What? Oh, thank you, sir. But who are you? I am but a poor trader, peddling any wares in the towns and villages. I arrive as if from nowhere, sell a little, scrounge a roof over my head, and then go on my way. Is that a Brompton you're riding? Yes. Now, what are you doing out here with this lovely cow? I was supposed to take her to the market today and sell her. We've got to sell Daisy because we're so poor. Moo. Mm. But we were like getting there and everyone had gone. There were fewer people around than at a talk on good personal hygiene at Ogg Camp. So now my mum won't be able to pay the rent tomorrow. Well, I could make you an offer for Daisy. I could do with a companion during my wanderings, and starting each day with a fresh glass of milk would be lovely. OK, then. How much? Well, I'm but a poor peddler. I can't offer much. How much? Well, all I can give you are these beans. Beans? Are you pulling my leg? I'm sorry, I really have nothing else to give you apart from these um, Windows Vista licences. Yeah, right. We'll take the beans. Not so fast, because these are no ordinary beans. These are magic beans. You what? Magic beans. They're magic beans. Well, what do you mean, magic beans? These beans will bring you all the wealth you desire and make you the happiest man on earth. Are you sure they're not SSL certificates? No, they're definitely beans. Magic beans. And how will they make me rich, then? I can't tell you that, but they will, one day, somehow. Ah, they work in the same way as the Twitter business plan. Well, all right then. I'll take your magic beans for Daisy. Well, old girl, I guess this is goodbye. Moo. Mm. Look after yourself and be good for your new master. I'll never forget you. Moo. Mm. Goodbye. Goodbye, Daisy. Jack watched the mysterious peddler lead Daisy off down the road, a tear welling in his eye. He walked all the way back home on his own. It was dark by the time he got there and his mother was waiting, eager to see how much money Jack had got for Daisy. When she found out that Jack had sold their beloved cow for a handful of seemingly useless beans, she got angry and threw the beans out of the kitchen window. Jack was sent to bed without any supper and he cried himself to sleep, for fear that his actions would lead to them getting evicted from their home in the morning. But when he awoke, Jack looked out of his bedroom window and saw a tall, green plant stretching from the ground into the sky. It was so tall that he couldn't see the top of it, as it was lost amidst the clouds. The stalk had grown from exactly the place where his mother had thrown the beans the night before. They really had been magic beans. Oh my golly gosh, that's a bit of a turn up for the books. Those beans have grown even faster than the price of a MySQL support contract. My mum is going to be so mad when she sees this. Jack ran down the stairs and out of the front door and stood at the bottom of the beanstalk, looking up at it. He still couldn't see the top. Inside, he heard his mother awaken. Oh, what a lovely morning. Such a shame we're going to spend it getting kicked out of our house. What is that? Jack, what have you done? What's that great tree doing there? The Baron is going to be so cross when he sees that. Just you stay there and wait till I get my hands on you. Not likely. In a panic, Jack grasped the leaves of the beanstalk and used them to pull himself up. He wedged his feet against the trunk and grabbed more leaves higher up and pulled again. Jack did it again and again and again until not only was he out of the reach of his mother but out of the reach of anyone. He was so high up the beanstalk that he could see his mother's farm way below him. Wow, the farm looks even smaller than the chances of Flash coming to the iPad. And there's Mum looking for me. 
She looks very angry. I'd better hide up here until she's calmed down and read the open respect declaration. As he hung on to the beanstalk, Jack thought he heard something, the faintest of sounds. This sound didn't come from the farm below him, but somewhere above his head. Jack listened carefully and heard the noise again. Curious, Jack carried on climbing the beanstalk, getting higher and higher. Before long, he was in the clouds, then above them. When the wisps finally cleared from in front of Jack's eyes, he was looking out across a magical landscape. Green fields full of healthy-looking crops surrounded a dirty, grimy castle next to a mill on a steep bank. But everything Jack saw was much, much bigger than it should have been. Tomatoes like giant red juicy footballs and carrots as big as a forearm. And the source of the mysterious noise Jack had heard. A giant, clucking goose the size of a llama. The goose saw Jack, clucked a startled cluck and ran into the castle. With all this food, I could feed Mum and me forever. Heck, I could feed the entire town. I could sell them these vegetables and make enough money to pay the rent and keep us warm in the winter. Oh, what was that? It's... I don't believe it. It's an egg, but made of gold. Solid gold. That goose must have laid it. Hey, wait, come back! Where did it go? Aha, I gotcha! Right, you're coming back down the beanstalk with me. Somehow. Fee, fi, fi, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make more bread. Killing you will be such fun whilst listening to music from a one one It'll be over so quickly, there'll be no coming back. You'll last even less time than a shot of Jack. Can't we discuss it? I've got so much to live for. I was going to start filing books. Honest, I was. Your plan to steal my goose is well below par. Let's be honest, it's just plain bad. I wouldn't spare you even if you committed to BZR or had a PBA on launchpad. You're stalling for time, though, trying to save your posterior. But now you're distracting me from finding a chief operation officer. That was even less of a discussion than the digital economy bill got. Ha! Oh, what's that noise I hear? The chance of cries fill me with fear. The mob is assembled as outside my tower. The seat and source of all my power. They want to place me in the stocks for changing the default search engine in Firefox. I thought it was best and most frugal to change from Yahoo to Google. Oh, no, it's not. not. Well, yes, it is. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, yes, it is. You've all misunderstood me. My plans aren't that grand. Aside. Though, wait till they find I'm replacing X with Wayland. You can stay up here safely with impunity. All I ask is you help me develop unity. <laughs> How did you find my tower? It gets past so few. Didn't you know? It's on Google Street View. Whilst the giant was arguing with the baying mob outside, Jack grabbed the goose that laid golden eggs and ran. He scrambled down the beanstalk, the leaves tearing off in his hands as he went. Before he knew it, he'd arrived at the bottom with the goose. Mum! Oh, Jack, there you are! I was worried sick. I thought you'd gone and done something silly like run away and installed Linux Mint. Oh, Mum, I'm sorry, but all our worries are over. Look! <laughs> Good Lord, a giant goose! It's going to take quite some stuffing. No, Mum, it lays golden eggs. We'll never be poor again. And who is this coming down the track? Mm. Daisy, you came home. Didn't you know I've been trading her? She's the world's first homing cow. Brilliant. Quick, let's chop down the beanstalk before the giant realises I've stolen his geese and follows us. So Jack cut down the beanstalk faster than Oracle could ever lose community members, and they all lived happily ever after, apart from Buttons who kept moving around. It's time for Gerald. <laughs> bit about Ubuntu. <laughs> about Ubuntu. <laughs> well, holding your breath there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, what's in the bit about Ubuntu? So, um, Matt Say, the chief operating officer of Canonical, has left Canonical. Mm. That didn't last very long. He only joined long. in. I remember earlier this season we did it. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> We're going to have to make episodes more frequent. <laughs> people, <laughs> people aren't lasting long enough between episodes. <laughs> He's gone to a new startup, mm. and the decision was because he doesn't get he's enjoyed it, but he doesn't get enough customer contact directly in what is now a big organisation at Canonical. Uh, at Canonical, so he wants to be a bit more customer contact hands on. 
Good luck to him. Yeah, fair enough. Mm-hmm. It's a bit disappointing. Obviously, people in those roles tend to stay for quite a few years because if their key roles, the stock market can, uh, you know, take an impact from people changing in publicly floated companies, changing mm. those key roles. Obviously, Canonical is privately owned, but you know, it's a shame, really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you know, best of luck to them. Well, they get they get into that size. I mean, I, I know a few a few people have left Canonical recently, but they're getting to that size where you notice a turnover, especially given a lot right. of the people are you know public faces you know you you follow them on twitter and you 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 read their blog posts on planet ubuntu and stuff so i think it, it's probably pretty normal but we're just seeing it feels like there's a churn of staff it's it's different being in a sort of startup company i guess where you're having the fun of creating everything for the first time than being in a company that's you know got to make a profit and you know, mm. has to be business centered and what sort of stuff gets a lot of stick for not maintaining things or fixing bugs or whatever yeah the honeymoon period is over i guess yeah mm. Colin Watson has announced that there will be no more PS3, no more PlayStation 3 ISO builds of Ubuntu. So if you've got a PlayStation 3, you can't install Ubuntu on it from Natty. Yes. Although... You can upgrade old versions, can't you? Apparently so, yes. Yeah, because the packages are still built, but the ISO images aren't. Because it yeah. puts too much load on the, the boxes in the back end that do all the building of the ISOs. Oh, right. What architecture is a PlayStation 3? PowerPC. PowerPC, yeah. Okay. So it's worse, that cell cpu yeah. thing but the thing is sony have changed they did a firmware update and they changed the playstation so you can't boot it was a it was a selling point of the the playstation 3 yeah. is that you could put linux on it you could buy a linux kit for it couldn't you yeah and uh, they've taken away that option and it does sound like that is the main reason of them stopping to do it rather than just the processing power for the build servers or whatever no. well, that's a byproduct yeah i guess yeah but yeah that's a bit disappointing i guess uh, Canonical's upstream liaison, George Castro, has posted a, a status report about uh, Unity. And what is the state of Unity? <laughs> <laughs> it's a state. It's a state. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So Unity is everybody's favourite new potential replacement desktop thing that makes it all look flashy and whizzy. Yes. Like Mac OS. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I, I was having a play with it today. I've got a machine that I'd upgraded from Maverick to Natty to, to play with this stuff. Uh, uh, Intel-based laptop, so it's not got any non-free stuff in it, so it should kind of work fairly well. I found it really painful. Oh, really? I mean, I know we're only at alpha and we're going to be beta soon, but I was was really disappointed, actually. Mm. They've um, they've got a new guy on the team. Um, His blog post says, uh, Matthew Rasmus has come on the team, um, working on uh, specific bugs to get things moving along and hopefully get it out in the when they're going to try to. Mm. Am I right in thinking it's going to be an option for Natty? It's, I thought it's going to be default, isn't it? It's the default, but you can choose to go back to classic GNOME, <laughs> which, you know, a lot of people say when you use the word classic, that's immediately you're throwing it on the bin. You know? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, so a lot of work to do, it sounds like. Yeah, I think so. In more Unity news, Jason, and then there's a gap where his name should be, Unity <laughs> developer ran a Q&A on Reddit about... But Unity, in fact. Yeah, so he, he went on... I, can't, I don't know the guy's last name. He's uh, one of the <laughs> Unity developers. And um, he just posted on Reddit and said, right, ask me your questions and I'll answer them. Because wow. there seems to be a lot of um, misinformation in in uh, both the press and the community about what Unity is and you know how it works and what the state will be. And Smith. Thank you. Jason Smith. <laughs> I'm guessing from his username. And he got loads of questions and you know, yeah. went through and yeah. answered them all you know, off his own back. Yes, oh, marvellous. He's been at Canonical for nine months, it says here. Crikey. Yeah. Um, and it, it's good to see there's a lot of interest. I mean, it's not unsurprising given the amount of interest we've heard about it, but yeah. a lot of people on Reddit kicking into it as well. Uh, and Matthew Paul Thomas has put out the call for artwork in the Ubuntu Software Centre. That's just for icons and things to like make the visual appeal of it a bit more you know, grabbing. Visually appealing. Visually appealing, <laughs> <laughs> visually appealing yes. Make it. They want to make it a joy to use. Apparently, Aww. yeah. He's written a brief which is on wiki.ubuntu.com, which you can you have a look at if you would like. Um, but yes, it, I think it looks okay at the moment. I'm not too sure. Yeah, I've never had a problem with it. Alan's Apart going. It's GTK. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but Alan uses Mac, so he's got a different point of reference. Ooh. And <laughs> what point of reference is that that I have? Like? Well, the shinier one. That's what I mean. Right. Is it? Yeah. To us, it might seem shiny compared with it's, a lot it, of stuff. It feels functional. Yeah, mm. uh, I'm not saying I'm you know any, I have any kind of clue about design matters in any way, shape, or form. No, but as a user, you can but, see it's yeah. not as shiny as say a Mac equivalent would be, yeah. for instance. And you look at the Android have revamped their store, mm. 
or um, what do they call it, marketplace. marketplace. They've revamped that to make it easier to use and you know more enjoyable. So it makes sense for us to do the same. You know. Yeah, yeah I think the main thing uh, MPT is looking for is um, to yeah. theme what they're calling departments, yeah. which are. <laughs> I suppose department store, I guess it fits. Yeah. But you know, the groups of, of software, the different classifications of software like games, accessories, graphics, internet, whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. And each one of those to look very visually different on the relevant screen in the Ubuntu Software Center. So oh. you'll know from the background or the icons or whatever it might be that you're in the games section. That's a good idea. And there's already been a couple of mock-ups. Someone's created one that's got um, like a, a, very, a very pale uh, background with like a trowel in it, which kind of indicates like development. Garden insects. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's where you buy your lawnmower. Uh... Uh, uh, the uh, games one has got a Pac-Man on uh, it, which is, yeah, it looks nice, but I wonder whether that's intuitive. It doesn't, uh, well, it's like having does a anyone... disc for save, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. Does anyone these days know what a Pac-Man you know, is or was? Well, quite. But yeah, uh, interesting to see what comes of that, see what happens. And that's everything in the bit about Ubuntu. Right, so uh, moving on straight into the feedback. Um, Ed Hewitt left a comment on the website about, um, sorry, uh, the website at uh, podcast.ubuntu-uk.org after we whinged about the lack of Kindle software for desktop Linux. He pointed out that Amazon does provide the Amazon MP3 downloader for Linux, and they have provided DEBs and RPMs. So it's not like Amazon can't make apps for the Linux desktop. This is true. Yeah, this is, is something it? I noticed yeah. this week because I bought an MP3 from Amazon for the first time ever. And it came up with four different packages mm. for their MP3 downloader. Yeah. And that MP3 downloader just works a treat. On the first time I used bit. it. On 32-bit, <laughs> because who needs 64-bit? <laughs> the only thing I can run it on is my netbook. Because it's the only thing I've got 32-bit installed on. <laughs> it does work on 64-bit, doesn't it? You can, and and uh, oh, here we go. We'll look and, and another you thing. You set him off, Mark. <laughs> you just just reminded me, and it doesn't work under ten ten without fudging a whole load of libraries and stuff in there as well. So it needs to be updated because I think it's technically for nine oh four or something. Yeah, like it that. came out a while ago. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's been updated. Actually, since. I used it when it first came out to buy like one song. And that's it. I've not used it since. If you buy, just, if you buy one song, it offers you a straight download. Yeah, I just did if you buy any more than that. You have to have this thing. So I use Ubuntu One Music Store. Yes. Uh, Although, uh, Banshee has both support for Ubuntu or Music Store and Amazon now. Oh, right. So, so you, maybe you, you don't need that. You could get away without the Amazon um, download. But anyway, That's the point Ed the was point making, is, yeah. the, the <laughs> Amazon do make code for um, non-Windows, non-Mac. Yeah. This is true. And they obviously think it's worth it. Yeah. Oh. Ben Fox emailed on podcast at ubuntu-uk.org to give us a shoeing for our flippant <laughs> dismissal of Google Wave being made available to install on your own box. Uh, Google Wave is just a real-time collaboration tool with version control. I use it with several friends to work on an expansion pack for a war game. As a project management tool, I haven't found anything better. By linking waves together, we can work on the different elements, be notified of any changes, discuss stuff in line, and drag and drop whatever we need in real time. I'd happily pay um, to be able to keep running the tool for a small project, so having my own server for it is great news. If I was trying to organise something like, say... Old camp, um, <laughs> I do it using Wave. Well, Ben, you're very welcome to. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we did try that. We didn't did, we? didn't we? Yeah. We, for about it didn't, it two didn't last days. long. <laughs> yeah, a day or two, and then we just reverted to using email <laughs> and phone calls. I suspect the problem with Wave is that people don't understand it, <coughs> and yeah. you need to go beyond the flippant marketing. Here's how quick and easy it is. YouTube videos to a more here's actually how you can do something constructive with it show me how to manage a software project or show me how to manage an activity or an event with it yeah if if I had an event that I needed to you know use a tool and I I I had enough time and inclination to try wave on our own box I I might be inclined to use it but the problem is you need buy-in from everybody else it's it's no good yeah. just me deciding to organise the whole thing in Wave if you lot are all going to use email or IRC. You have to have everyone using it. I yeah. remember Tony took a while to convince to get a Google account even. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's fine. I was going to make a joke about Tony not having a mobile phone, but... <laughs> <laughs> Probably best not. No. John, the nice guy Spriggs, and he really is a nice guy. He is. He is. He emailed us about Wave too. Wave in a box, something I can really see taking off within business. 
as it gives a company all the benefits of rich text collaborative document editor, but gives you the ability to spin off discussions around specific points with individuals. For example, if you're writing an advert up and wanted to get the legal team to review it, you could bring them into the document and ask them to either edit the document or highlight areas of concern. Once they'd approved it, it could go to management to approve the publication. And finally, the specific text of the advert could then be published separate from the discussion. I'm really excited to see where this goes. Okay, so it adds workflow mm. to the document yeah. creation process or the project process. Yeah, yeah. and that, that email with the example did give me more kind of, I kind of want to go back and try it again yeah. now. Mm. Uh, Interestingly, the only other, when, <laughs> when Google Wave was still Google Wave, the, the other sort of implementation of it I saw in the works was by Novell. They called it Novell Pulse. So they obviously saw that there was a market for having businesses having their own wave implementation within a an organisation. So what happened to Pulse then? Uh, I think well, when it was when Wave was released uh, or submitted to the Apache, um, yeah, software incubator, yep. piece, yeah. Um, then I think they were saying that as well as Google backing it, Novell were one of the companies who were backing it. So they're obviously still keen to okay. have something to do with it. We shall see. Mm. Okay. Well, there we go. And he also asks, I wonder whether you guys might be able to give in a plug for a project I'm involved in. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, all right. And seeing as you're such a nice guy, uh, it's cchits.net. It's a podcast to encourage and support Creative Commons music. There's a daily show which contains one Creative Commons track. Each track has a link to vote for it, and the results for those votes determine the content of the weekly and monthly shows. The site behind the podcast also allows podcasts to get their own shows more exposure, as each track which has been played on one of their shows can be linked back to the show with the track's rating, helping podcasts get a better idea about what music their audience likes. CC hits. I read it as chits. <laughs> <laughs> First time. <laughs> Yes. Well. There we go. We could add to our uh, our pre live stream playlist. Yes. No, no. Well, only only if CC hits is full of nineteen twenties out of copyright music because <laughs> that's only what Tony has. Well, absolutely, that's all that's in my music collection. Did you buy that from Amazon using the MP3 download at the One Music Store? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I like that idea. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy really common stuff, idea. and quite happy to put that in on, in our pre show playlist if you're listening live. Yeah, sounds like a good idea. And it might stop me getting moaned at from the uh, the people in the Ubuntu UK podcast IRC <laughs> channel. And uh, the last thing only remains for us to uh, uh, wish one of our, our dear members of the podcast crew, Simon, <laughs> bon voyage. He said, if you're going to say goodbye to me, make it quick. <laughs> so <laughs> we are, we are going to make it quick. Um, yes. Only to say we have had a couple of emails that was, uh, in from our lovely listeners. So uh, Andy Piper wrote in to say, just a note, thanks Simon for all his work on UUPC. I've just reread this blog posting about his decision to step down from the podcast. And it's apparent that the whole thing really has been a team sport. And that's a good thing. Every team needs balance and a healthy mix of opinions and styles. And I'm sure his contributions over the past three seasons have been appreciated by all of the audience and not just me. So thank you, Simon. Thanks for help. Uh, thanks for helping to get the podcast off the ground and for all the work you've put in. We'll see you around the interwebs. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and another email from Josh Holland. It's sad that longtime presenter Simon is leaving the show. He's always provided a great down-to-earth alternative perspective on the topics you've discussed and certainly has a most listenable voice. Ooh, he go. was a great guy to meet at Og Camp's gone, and I'm sure we'll still see him around. I hope his replacement can keep the insight going. A oh, replacement? Sure. Is that me? <laughs> <laughs> Down to earth. Does that mean grumpy get in the corner? <laughs> yeah, something like be. that. <laughs> and we also had this voicemail from Laura. Hello, Laura here. Just thought I'd drop a line to say on the show to say farewell to Simon. It's been really great listening to you on the show over the past few series. Um, you've brought a different angle to the topics, and I've always enjoyed your discussions. You'll be fondly missed. Take care. Bye bye, Laura. Thanks, Laura. Oh, bless her. Hopefully, she gets to Ireland for Christmas. Mm. That's Laura Chikoski. Mm. Yeah, yes. stuck at Heathrow. Yeah. And Andy Stanford Clark. Hi, podcast team. I'd like to add my two pence worth to the no doubt bulging sack of letters for Simon. <laughs> Not all good. <laughs> 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 bulging A4 sheet. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly I'll miss hearing Simon on the podcast. I've always felt he was there as someone who was much closer to the ordinary man in the street than the rest of the team. <laughs> Cheers, Andy. Yeah. How refreshing to hear the views and opinions of someone with a normal job rather than we IT and computer geeks who are Freaks. lucky enough to get paid <laughs> to do what we'd be doing anyway for a hobby if we didn't have to go to work. Simon always seemed to be the voice of reason when it came down to a debate. 
between a techie solution and an easy to understand and use solution. Mm, the voice of reason. <laughs> Simon's willingness to help the community was always evident, particularly for less experienced users, and I hope this will continue and perhaps even increase now that he has an extra evening every two weeks in which to twiddle his thumbs. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! Got some MQTT love light on the for you. <laughs> I'm sure, for example, just picking a random one out the air that the MQTT oh. wiki would love to receive a little more TLC from him. Hint, hint. I do have plans. Yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so, Simon, you'll be sadly missed on the podcast, but you've done great work to help make the UUPC the great success that it is, and you should be very proud of that. I'm sure whatever you decide to turn your energies to next will benefit just as much from your involvement blah, 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 from your involvement as the UUPC community has. And do keep in touch. There we go. And finally, last but not least, from Graham Bins. He's, he writes, it's funny, but as I'm sitting here trying to think of nice things to say about Simon, <laughs> <laughs> the first thing Scratch that comes to mind is how unassuming he is when you first meet him. And that's a terrible way to start this kind of thing. It'd be easier if he was shockingly tall or shockingly orange or just a bit weird, like some of the UUPC <laughs> presenters I won't mention. <laughs> but the fact is that Simon is a genuinely normal and likable bloke, despite the fact he thinks motorcycling is a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I've only met Simon in the flesh twice. Once at Og Camp 10 in Liverpool, where he very patiently let me take photos of him in the vestibule outside the uh, men's toilet. No, yeah. I'm not kidding. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and once at canonical offices at Millbank, where he participated in the user testing of some new launchpad UI that I cooked up. Both times he came across as an amiable, charming, smart and friendly. The sort of bloke you'd quite happily have a pint or two with in the pub, shooting the breeze about stuff, nonsense and open source software. When I started writing this, I wanted to come up with something funny, and I had images in my head of painting Simon as a sort of balding, horse-riding, unicycle, hockey-playing, modern-day Errol Flynn, but it just didn't seem to work. Besides, there's always a chance that someone would actually believe whatever tripe I managed to invent, which, whilst funny, would have led people approaching Simon in the street with a unicorn and screaming, Go on then, where's your ball? While slapping them in the face. On the other hand, I might just try that, just to weird him out. So the short version then, Simon, top bloke, great UUPC presenter, will be missed. Uh, uh, how's your ego feeling now, Simon? Yeah, I Gently want, stroked. I, yeah. <laughs> I didn't want all that. Um, it's been an absolute blast. Um, and I'm going to miss it, but then I'm not going to disappear. I absolutely have lots of plans to continue to be involved. Good. Uh, well, if you're doing MQTT uh, stuff, we hope to hear about it. Make yeah. sure you send well, us some voicemails. You know, I plan to get old camp and do MQTT. So, Brilliant. Um, oh, cool. Uh, definitely. I'm not going to disappear. Um, okay. Thank you to everybody. Thank you to you all. And uh, I shall uh, use the... Uh, <laughs> the free time. Uh, the, use the free time <laughs> to enjoy myself. Okay, and last but not least, we've got a little thank you as a memento of your what three like. long years, three long hard years uh, with the Ubuntu UK podcast, which is a, a framed version <laughs> wow. of the, uh, the sheet music, music for our theme tune. Superb. Um, <laughs> the bits Thanks with the lyrics much. which you never hear yeah. uh, when we do it on live. There we go. Thank you very much. Cool. I'm embarrassed. Do That's something fun. else. Okay. <laughs> well, it's time for you to say goodbye now. Oh, I've closed my laptop out. <laughs> <laughs> Professional to the Somebody last. Somebody else do it. Go on, baby. That's all for this episode, and indeed the series. Thanks for listening. We'll be back in a couple of months. But until then, you can find out how to get in touch with us on our website, podcast.ubuntu-uk.org, including voicemail numbers and Twitter feeds, Facebook and IRC channels. Let us know what you think of the show, or give us your thoughts about Ubuntu and the community around it. Well, we hope we have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, if that's Don't your thing. Don't get snowed in. Yeah. So when are you lot coming back? <laughs> What's the? You don't, need, you don't need to worry about it. <laughs> I know. We need to worry about it. <laughs> Keep an eye on the website. I'm sure we'll make an announcement. But yeah, uh, that's the end of the season. I hope it's been a good one. I've enjoyed it. Yes. Yeah. And we'll see you yeah. next year. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.